Oh, pretty smooth. Freaking smoked you, dude. <laughs> With my own gun. Oh, you got owned at night oh. in the desert. You know I, you, you know I still think a world of you as a shooter. <laughs> dude, that freaking rocked. Wow. Okay, I'm uh, kind of impressed with that gun. It's not what you said 30 seconds ago. Shh, don't tell the people that. They don't need to know that. Dude, that is awesome. Try some rounds. I don't know about you dudes, but I am generally a fan of having a light on my handguns in most POUs, especially when it is lightweight, compact, affordable, sufficiently bright, tough, just like this Streamlight TLR3 C4 LED subcompact light. A great option. Hi guys, Net and Fancy here. This is my tabletop review, as I've mentioned in some other vids, on this fine little light. We'll get to the specifics here in just a sec. But we'll start it off with just a little bit of philosophy. Do you need the light mounted onto your handgun? And there is some controversy about it. To fairly represent all points, some say that you don't, that it's actually a liability, that as you employ the light, turn it on, it provides a convenient aiming point for the bad guy, for him to return fire pretty much right to your face, since your handgun is going to be held in line with your cranium, right? I understand that train of thought. And the guys will go on with various techniques of how they can use a separate flashlight, kind of like this Phoenix TK-10, used in unison with your handgun to illuminate your bad guy. Here's what I say. I say it's complex and very hard to do with any level of proficiency, especially under stress, especially in the middle of the night after you've just woken up. Having to find this light somehow integrated in a proper, uh, in a proper grip where you can shoot accurately with your handgun is a lot to ask for anyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Joe Tactical with thousands and thousands of rounds uh, under your belt with that handgun. It is tough. I think it makes a lot more sense to have the light mounted onto the gun so it is simple Simon. When you pull the gun out, you don't have to fumble around for it. It's ready to rock and roll, especially if you decide to employ the gun in a home defense role where that target identification is so critical and statistically more likely. Lots of other POUs would require it as well. In the Nut and Fancy project, we like shooting at night against those steel plates. Also paper bad guys. We continue to do that, both with tactical carbines, shotguns, and of course pistols. What makes this capable, or what makes this uh, possible, is a weapon light like the TLR3. There's lots of other lights out there, and I know it. I've used many of them. ITI has their M3, M6 series out there, both with and without the lasers. I've used those over the years. The problem with those is, uh, one, they're using kind of an older technology. The TLR3 uses a Cree LED. Very bright and very durable. Look to my lighting products videos. I've covered many flashlights here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Well, maybe not many, more to come. Um, but I'm a fan of the new LEDs, and to me, they just blow away the old Xenon technology. So if you're saying that you know the M3 or the M6 is the way to go with the old Xenon technology, I say you kind of need to update. Uh, I prefer the wider light of the Cree LEDs, as you can see here. And by the way, since we are looking at it, look at that intensity of the beam. Nice spill beam coming out of the TLR3. It's like a properly designed flashlight to me. Having shot this over the past few months at different ranges, all the way out to about 30 yards against plates, this is an effective light and it works. Uh, and also it's just a single cell light as well. It just runs, let me get this right, it's not a CR123, it's a CR2 cell that the TLR3 uses. So it's a little bit different in the battery of choice, but for a single cell light, it really cranks out the illumination. So I remain a fan of the new LED lighting technologies, obviously bright white, well culminated beam, shock resistant in the mounting of the TLR3. Of course, this is not the only weapon light that uses it. But right now, I'll tell you this, it's my favorite. First off, because of cost. 
you'll be able to get the TLR3 for around $55. Printing out the Botash Tactical Information Sheet, and this is as of October 2009. Using their stimulus, 15% uh, off, you can see right there, the pricing. They sell it for $75, knock off 15%, and then Streamlight currently has a rebate. I think it's only till the end of this month, though, on the lights. So around $55. If you're an FFL, that's probably your price all the time. That is a lot of light with a lot of capabilities for that amount of money. Compared to some other offerings, it absolutely blows them away in terms of value. And that's my biggest beef with Surefire. I think Surefire makes a lot of good lights, but they have always been outlandish in their pricing. And, it, and I just hate it. For instance, one of, this, one of the competitors to the TLR3 is the X300. $250 retail, 3.7 ounces. Yeah, it's waterproof down to 22 meters, they say. Uh, okay, whatever. 110 lumens, bright light, C4 technology, or Cree technology, of course. Good light. But $250 for a weapon light? Then you have the Surefire X400, which integrates a laser, same lighting capability, 4.4 ounces. $455 retail from Surefire. That is insanity, in my opinion. This provides all the illumin ca illumination capabilities, at least against the X300, that that Surefire does for a lot less money. Uh, in its own line, the stream, the stream light line I'm talking about, there are some other ones, of course. The TLR1, as you can see here from the product bro brochure, that's also using the same super bright LED technology. Then you have the TLR2, which integrates a laser on the bottom, same lighting capability. These are good lights. If you have these, you know that. The problem is, for me, a little bit too heavy. You know, they're running around the four ounce point, and for a handgun mounted light, I really think that's just too heavy. Uh, as such, I've used some other proprietary options before. The Glock lights are good, they're also around two and a half ounces, but they use that old bulb xenon technology. They're not as good and as advanced as this little TLR3. This one's leading the pack right now as far as I'm concerned, for a pistol-mounted light. And that's why I'm making this video, because I want to identify this option for you homeowners, all you good civilian sheepdogs, law enforcement, and military types out there looking for a compact weapon light. Awesome. Love it. Uh, and those ITIs, the Stream, uh, the Surefires, those are good options if you can afford them, if you already have them. I don't know if this provides any more capabilities than those unless, unless weight is super critical to you. How does it work? The mechanics of the TLR3 are pretty simple. You're going to have a rail uh, mount system, but unlike some other offerings, it comes with what they call rail keys in this little plastic bag, and they will fit a wide variety of handguns. And where'd that other light go? I had I had a separate one off rail, and I don't know where it's at. Hang on, let me find it. Okay, here is a TLR3. I found it off the gun so you can look at the specifics. First off, look how compact that is. What a great job they did in engineering this little weapon like. Two and a half ounces, 2.4 to be exact. Very, very small. In comparison, in comparison to some other lights, again, the Phoenix TK-10, you can see that much smaller. And even again, it's the Phoenix P3D. It is a small weapon light indeed. You can tell when it's on the gun, but when you're holding it, you can really tell it blows away all the other competition, at least uh, that I have seen, in terms of weight and size. And also, it's bright. You're not really giving up a lot in brightness running that one single CR2 cell. So this is basically a 3-volt three vo uh, light putting out 90 lumens with that Cree LED. Nicely done. Uh, and that's good. That's going to be good out to about 30 yards, in my experience, of really bright illumination, of course, tapering off beyond that. It depends, of course, on your eye and how you perceive it, but about 30 yards or so for me. You can see it has a textured, not a smooth reflector, and that's partially responsible for that very nice beam and spill beam dispersion that it has. Anyway, another thing I like about it is its adaptability, and that's where I was going initially. You can adapt the TLR3 to any handgun you have, just about, with the included keyways, the nylon keyways. If you look in the manual for the TLR3, it has somewhat of a spotty listing of guns there on the keys A through E that you'll use. Uh, I find that some are missing. For instance, a SIG P226 and its brethren are nowhere to be found. 
And so you just kind of have to go into testing mode and just fit it up, find what works best. It's real easy to put those keyways on. You'll just unscrew this screw. By the way, don't lose that spring under it because that's responsible for making uh, supposedly the removal of the gun one-handed. I haven't really seen that, but that's supposedly what it's for. But you'll fit the keyway in to your gun and just experiment. Find the one that works best and that keyway is needed. Uh, just by way of experimentation, I shot it on a gun without it. Which one was it? I forget. It might have been an and 9 or something. And we found, no, it was F and P9. And found that it migrated forward even after really tightening it down. The reason I wanted to try that though, and this might be one of the downsides for its adaptability, is because it kind of gaps out far in front of the trigger guard with some mounting uh, guns. Like the SIG, you can see. It's not mounted right up against that trigger guard with the chosen key that I have and that's the best one I could find. Uh, I guess that is a downside. If you had a proprietary or purpose-built light for the gun like the Glocks it would snug right up there so you're kind of not going to have that with a TLR3 but you will need that keyway. If you don't have it even if you crank the screw down once again you know it's going to work itself off the rail and get all jacked up. Uh, the manufacturer tells us this this is called a face cap in their terminology if you do, with your chosen handgun, mount the TLR3 kind of far forward where it's going to get that lead blast, especially if you're shooting rounds that have exposed lead bases, you're going to get some lead buildup on, the, uh, build on this. They say it's pretty much going to be hard to remove, if not impossible to remove, and advocate that you wrap this maybe with electrical tape. The glass is easy enough to clean. And by the way, that is glass, not plastic. They recommend ultra-fine steel wool to get it clean. In my experience, you can use uh, just regular gun solvent. It won't hurt anything. And I think this whole body would be resistant to that. But if you don't want to get like totally caked with lead, you might want to tape it up. Uh, I generally will run a light on a full-size gun. Remember the POU I'm talking about is a go-to-war gun. Maybe that is a holster carried option as a secondary weapon, WRL, duty use, whatever. Uh, maybe a home defense gun. In that situation, I prefer a full-size gun, not a compact one. Have a longer sight radius, more velocity. Uh, it's easier to shoot more accurately uh, because those longer, you know, the longer slides and the more weight actually helps you shoot it better. Just like I mentioned in a lot of my vids. TLR3 though, for the money, uh, around fifty-five dollars, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on where you're going to get it. It is a lot of light, and there's actually very few that compete against it. Even its own TLR1s and 2s, just like sh I showed you in uh, the literature. I think also someday they're going to come out with one that integrates a laser. Would I prefer that over this basic light one? Uh, not necessarily, because anytime you add a laser to your weapon light, you're adding a lot of cost. Just like I said with the Surefire options, the X400 is almost double the cost of the X300. Uh, same with the Streamlights. You know, if you go with a TLR2, which has an integrated laser, much more expensive. You know, is it worth it? That's what you need to ask yourself. Is a laser option worth it in your given POU? I think lasers do have a, uh, you know, a place. I think they're excellent training tools when you're dry firing and such. I think they're great intimidation tools against bad guys uh, in certain POUs. It just depends. But generally, I would not delay waiting for the laser version to come out. Uh, because I, the way I shoot, I use my sights. And that's the way I practice across the board. Uh, I think sometimes when you integrate a laser, you may lose some very precious seconds searching for that laser dot when you could just illuminate the subject. Yeah, bad guy. Yes, my life is at risk. Start popping rounds with good sight alignment and solve the problem. So light for me, I don't need a laser necessarily in this POU. Some guys may level a criticism against the TLR3 saying, well, it's not waterproof. Uh, the product literature says that it's dust and shockproof and virtu virtually indestructible, but it says nothing about its waterproofness, which means to say that it's not waterproof. To me, that is not a showstopper, unless I'm a Navy SEAL or some other type of operative where I know for a fact I'm going to go swimming with my handgun. In that case, you're probably not going to be able to get away with a 2.4 ounce weapon light. You're going to have to get something heavier, uh, kind of along the lines of the X300 Surefire. And you're going to pay a lot more. Uh, I mean, you can't get nothing, something for nothing. It gets back to my old firepower versus mobility argument. I mean, take your pick. 
to me, this is a realistic weapon option for probably 95% of all the users out there. Uh, would I like it to be waterproof down to, I don't know, 100 meters for the same weight, same price? Of course I would. I would love that. But the technology isn't there yet, at least at this $55 or $60 price point. Um, so you're still getting a heck of a lot of light for that price. And I think for most dudes, it will function absolutely superbly, um, as it has for us. So have a light on your gun. It makes good sense in lots of POUs, maybe not concealed carry. But target identification remains when your key responsibilities. You know that. Get a light that works. Get a light that doesn't ruin your balance and also that doesn't ruin your checkbook. That right now is a Streamlight TLR3 by Nut & Fancy. Highly recommended with its C4 Ultra Bright Cree LED technology. Signing off. Thanks a lot, dudes. See ya. Aiming low? Yeah. Very bottom of plate. I see what you're saying now. Or do ya? Maybe not. I think I need to shut my pie hole. <laughs>